Hi, my name's Cathy Millett, and this week we're going to look at how to wear the plastic without painting it. it. Might seem that you can't do it, but you can get a really good result if you do. The good thing about modelling somebody like the Master Chief is there are no shortage of photos and videos out there on YouTube and Google generally for you to find to help and there's some really good close-ups so that when you come to do the detailing you can get it spot on. So a couple of um, months ago I bought a sprue kits model and these are lovely kits to put together. They literally, you just need to snip them and they clip together, you don't need glue and in some ways you don't need to paint them. So this is my first one I bought, it's a level two kit, so it comes out quite small and you can see it started off life looking like this for effect and it ends up looking like that. Now I'm very pleased with how that came out, I think he's quite um, effective as a master chief, so I'm going to try and emulate that for this size. Let's see how it works. Now the observant amongst you might notice there's little white deposits on that. This is because I had a go and I used um, a, well I basically used dull coat as a matte varnish and it didn't quite work on the big scale as well as it did on the small scale. So we're redoing them again but this time we're going to use um, a, sort of an acrylic varnish. So what are we going to do? Well first up, the problem with plastic, if I'm honest, it looks plasticky. It's got a plastic sheen to it and although this has got some white spots on it now from um, getting off my dull coat, it still it still looks plasticky. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go out in the garage and I'm going to spray a varnish. Now you've got a choice, you can do matte or you can do a kind of satin. I've ummed an art and with the matte things don't flow as well and there's a lot of flowing in this technique so I'm going to try it with the sort of the um, basic satin varnish and I'm going to use either AK Interactive or Vallejo, whatever's to hand, something like that, one of those brands works really well but anything as long as it's acrylic and the reason it has to be acrylic is our next steps are going to be with enamels and, it, and washes and they're solvent based and otherwise the varnish comes straight back off again when you try and use them. Now the most important step at this point is to get a set of pictures of what your finished one's going to look like. Every model kit comes with suggestions. Um, I had to make this one a bit lighter actually because I couldn't see that dark one which is when it printed it just came out really dark. So I actually lightened this one in on my iPhone and printed it so it was a little bit lighter. And that's in front of me all the time so that I know what I'm doing when I do these various next stages. So actually the first thing I'm going to do is paint some patches on him that are slightly darker colour. And that's because on here you can see there are patches of darker colour. So specifically a little patch there above his knee, um, his side holster, his little buckly things, they're always dark, and some bits on his arms and a bit around the back there. So I'm going to check what colour they've paint, they've moulded them in. So in this case they've moulded them in a, a dark colour so it's fine. So you just click him back together. Um, but where they've done it on the green, I'm going to paint him with just a Vallejo paint, just a thin layer. And this is literally, and this is literally just grey black, black grey. It's one of my favourite colours. It's not quite black, it's not quite grey. It's just lovely. And I could put a bit of green into it, but I'm just going to go with neat for now. Thin brush and Vallejo goes straight on. So I've, I've already done this stage once, so I know exactly where I'm going to paint him. So I'm just going to go on and get on and hand paint it. And you could mask this and do everything, but in that case, you probably have spray painted the whole lot anyway. And you do this stage first, so that if you make any errors, it gets picked out a little bit by the panel lines that we're going to put on in a second and they sort of neaten up your edges. So you can never totally get rid of poor painting, but you can mitigate it a little bit. Now, even at 50 times the speed it took me to do this, it still takes quite a while. And it's worth saying on these kind of models, it's all about the detail. So it's really important that you spend the time to just get these extra details on there. 
we haven't painted the whole model, so we have to make it look like there's been something added to it. So now I'm going to do the panel lines. Now I'm going to use a MIG dark wash. I know that it's hard to find MIG dark washes now, but you can use any of the Ammo by MIG or AK Interactive um, washes, just a darkish one. You want to match it to your colour that's here. And what you're going to do is just gently put it on and then wait a few minutes while it dries and then take it off. And it's to fill the lines. So it's, it's not really a shading so much as to just put a little bit extra into sort of areas like this where if you um, just touch it on, it runs along the lines and you want it in the lines. So what you need to come back and do in a minute is taken out of everywhere that wasn't a line. And this is where um, the bigger the model, unfortunately, the longer it takes you. So um, a big model like this will take a long time. A smaller model, much quicker to do, but it's worth taking the time and having the patience to get it to look right, because this really does add a lot to your model. And then these take a day or two to dry. They're not um, too fast, but they're not too slow. So you just need to make sure that you um, give them plenty of time, or when you get to the next layer, you start taking it off. I'm also gonna make sure that I do it around these areas and put it on quite thickly to act as a, a first layer on this, um, because these do not look anything like what we want them to do. So it's gonna build up a number of layers. So this is just the first of quite a few layers to go onto this section. Um, just to give them enough sort of shading to look realistic. I'm using this in two ways. One is a very thin, almost like a wash or paint, and the other as a panel definition line. So having put all that on, we now need to take it off. And the easiest way to do that is with a cotton bud and just some thinner. This is actually white spirit, but you know, you can buy it in very small and expensive packets like this. And you don't want this to be sopping wet. You just, um, and actually a note, some of my plastic's actually cracked and it's done that on other um, models that I've done over the years and too much turps or thinner does actually affect your plastic and if it's got stress lines, it can crack. So best not to wash them massively in this, though to be fair, I did take mine in isopropyl alcohol to strip it once, so that might be why it's partly so cracked. But just be careful, not too much. So I'm just gonna turn him over and you just literally, oops, go along and this you can see why it's good to have um, put on a an acrylic varnish so it doesn't come off with this um, solvent. Right I'm going to leave these to set for a day or two and I might come back and see if there's any bits where I've missed which looks blodgy but they'll more or less get taken care of in the next step which uses the same set of solvents so you can just dissolve them then. Um, and yeah now I will say just be very careful um, the varnish that I've used is a Vallejo, oh, sorry, it was an AK Interactive um, acrylic varnish. I find they don't sit as solidly as the solvent ones, so don't scrub on this stage or you will lift it. And I actually lifted on the edge of one of them a little bit of the varnish because I scrubbed too hard. So use more of the solvent and less scrubbing when you, when you do it and then you'll be okay. So now what I'm going to do is just try and bring out some definition on these panels. And there's a number of ways you can do it, but I'm going to take a sort of darkish green, slimy grime, dark enamel colour. And it's a typical AK, AK ammo, they all have it. And I'm going to use it um, to just add a little bit of shading and depth. So how I'm going to do that is I'm going to open it up. And I'm going to put a um, streak just along the top edges of these areas like this. And I'm just going to let it dry. I'm going to make sure I mirror it for a, a few minutes. Okay, that's enough. Now I'm going to drag it down with some um, just thinner for washes. Not a huge amount, quite a dry brush, because I don't want to streak it everywhere and make it a complete mess. And I'm just going to use, as I said, quite a wide, thick brush. So 
So the next step is to scratch him up. Now, the Master Chief is incredibly scratched. If you look at any of the pictures, almost every edge of his armour gets scuffed and battered and scratched. And there's many ways to do that, and you can do it with a Sharpie. And when you're doing the edges, that does work quite well. So what you might do is just take it and run it along these edges here, and it does a really good job actually. And I do like the Sharpie effect, but I find quite often I just blob it down the sides a little. So I tend to go with a smaller brush now that is easier to control. And I'm using an acrylic paint because I want it not to be taken off by any subsequent enamel layers that I'm gonna do. So this is just a Tamiya Chrome Silver X11. And it's a nice chrome because that seems to be the color he scratches down to. So what we need to do is not have too much on the brush or it does blob everywhere, just highlight some of these edges and scratch him. And this is quite a um, sort of, it's not a great brush, if that makes sense. It's well sort of battered. So it actually puts multiple streaks and it also makes very fine streaks. So definitely one to be subtle on. Yes, he's got a lot of scratches, but they're all quite fine scratches. So I like to catch all of his raised areas and just scratch across them and make sure every edge has something just catching him off. And if it's too much, just brush it back off again. So we're halfway through, we've got the base coats on, next up is the weathering, so tune into part two to see how I do that. say something it's well worth listening to. <sighs> wow. I wonder if I can persuade him to take me on one of his trips. Hmm. Surprise! so much fun. Boy, am I glad he persuaded me to go to all those places. I mean, oh, when we saved the galaxy, I was a little bit traumatic after me. I didn't think we were going to make it there at the end. And I've got to say, there were some levels. This thing called Assault in the Control Room, we, had to, oh, we went through three times before we got there. It's really boring the third time round, but you know, he doesn't give up. That's why he's a hero. <laughs> 